Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Paladins 1.0 patch breakdown where I'm going to be giving an overview and opinions on the incredibly huge, insane, inconceivably awesome patch this time around. So let's uh, open up the forum patch notes. Huh, that's strange. Oh, okay, let's just uh, see here. OB70 is... Paladins 1.0. Oh. Jokes aside, this is going to be a slightly ranty video, an amber in the Rantino scale. To put that into context, with OB64 cards unbound, what I felt was despair at the addition of arguably pay to win mechanics. OB67, Realm Restored, was elation at a rollback of Cards Unbound and a solid fair free to play model for the game. With 1.0, if you can actually call it that, it is disappointment and missed opportunities and a bit of a confusing state to launch in. So digging in. That is right folks, somehow Open Beta 70, emphasis on Open Beta, is the launch version 1.0. This was confirmed by Alyssa on Twitter last night. I would have covered it back then, but I just went to bed instead. Sums up how I felt really. Perhaps it was slightly naive to assume that there would be some form of update, even small hotfix splash screen or some skins today. At the moment, even the launcher says 0.70 something. To be fair, you do get 200 crystals and a flaming avatar, and everything is fine meme if you've played the beta once you actually log into the game. Nice. But, Hyras have been extremely vague in their press releases and communications on exactly what launch and 1.0 would be. There was no explicit mention of an update in their website announcement. They did talk about in-game events within the month, but we were left guessing what was coming today. Nothing. They did talk about how there would still be bugs, which perhaps was a hint, but I don't really want to be playing Cluedo with press releases. Plus, it has been about three weeks now since the last patch announcement, so it isn't crazy to expect a patch. After tweeting for a few days myself and people trying to speculate on Reddit, Hyra's Alyssa said first over on Reddit that there was a patch 1.01 coming next week with supposed big bug fixes and balance. The first time it was mentioned, I assume that there would still be a patch today, or 1.0 would be a physical release rather than an imaginary one. Although, obviously we found out last night that that wasn't the case. I'm often just quite confused by some of the choices made. Why not just have had that week and release then with an actual patch, when an actual patch was ready to go live with, so they had something tangible to push when they were pushing this release? Now there's kind of a vacuum, speculation as an option, was it to coincide with the announcement of the Nintendo Switch Online Services, which was literally just announced, I don't know whether it was today or yesterday, I saw it on Reddit in the morning, anyway I was reading that. But anyway, let's just move on to why I also think this current version was bad to launch on. Hyra's defense is, again, that games will always have bugs, and they have pretty fast and loose development ethic, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because we've had lots of releases, lots of patches, lots of changes in the past. And sure, there are bugs even in AAA games at launch and during patches and things like that, but the difference between Paladins 1.0 and a AAA launch is that a AAA launch, the game would likely be fixed within a few hours. There are pretty big game-breaking bugs that could stop new players from continuing to tr play the Paladins 1.0. So these are a few of the ones that I'd really like to have seen fixed before it went live. So the first one is loading in, then disconnecting to the menu, potentially missing a first round or even a few kills in Deathmatch or Onslaught. And some players just never bother to reconnect. But what you have to do is you have to re-log, which is confusing in of itself when you get back to the menu screen. You might think if you've just crashed, which some people just leave from. The next one is the alt and tabbing issue, where it causes the game to freeze. Apparently F11 can take you out of full screen and back into full screen, which I didn't actually know. And also apparently alt and enter is working. But to a new player to the game, they aren't likely going to know this and might not even bother to try and fix it, because that's just going to be their first impression. There's also the LSD bug, which is more occasional than the other two, um, but gives you like either underground glitches or you just have loads of textures going over the top of each other. And it has been something that's popped up in the past, but seems to be worse this time around. That one happens a lot less than the other two. Finally, alongside these issues, these big more ones that could turn people off, there is some polish lacking still, 
And because so much has changed, I think, over the last two patches or so, with avatars missing, the battle pass challenges still not being in, and likely not now to be in till next week. But there's also the important and confusing one, which is where models get stuck in a default position, as it kind of breaks aiming at people. So people are saying that this is exaggerated with these bugs, but my first literal match today on 1.0, I had the alt and tab freeze. I didn't actually know about the fix, so I restarted. And my disconnects are probably one in four or five matches at the moment. And there are a lot of matches where people are replaced by bots, even for a little while. Like, they don't necessarily leave for the whole match, but that could lose you or win you a game. Honestly, it was good Hire is committed to their current model of monetization of skins and game effective items are all without any pay to win. The state of the game at the moment on that side is pretty good as free to play games go. Plus launching takes you out of that early access tag which I don't think is necessarily as valid once you start charging large sums for in-game microtransactions. It's just a bit of an excuse for deflecting criticism, a la it won't be like this in full release and then some games just never release. So props to them there for stepping into the light. And like I said at the start, it's more disappointment more than anything else. There's not a lot to first draw in new players with this update, no content at all. Champion releases and things like that are big draws, but it wasn't exactly what I expected. I just expected something to be tangible, to be marketed, I guess. Plus there's those bugs, which will frustrate veterans and may even have some people leaving in the Steam charts. There's actually a little bit of a dip this month. It had been growing since Open Beta 67, but then it dipped a little bit this month. I mean, even some veterans won't be putting up with this. But the main thing is that it's going to be harder hitting to anyone that comes to try out the game thinking, ooh, a release, let's give this a go. To then hit some of the issues in the matches currently, it could really be off-putting and just be like, well, I don't really want to have to deal with this. You want just a smooth, slick running a game if you're having a release this early on. I, I, I just feel that it could have been a bit better. I don't necessarily think everything needed to be ironed out and obviously not every bug had to be squashed but some of these bigger ones definitely are kind of a, a potential obstacle to a new player actually getting into and loving the game. For me the core gameplay of Paladins is great. As a balance of a patch goes this isn't the worst. Champions ebb and flow into meta as they are rejigged slightly with balancing and sure, there are some cheesy champions. Impulse Cass is quite frustrating at the moment, but for the most part, I personally don't think anything is crazily imbalanced or is a mess. Contrary to how many people claim X, Y, or Z is overpowered, and not that it is all perfect, and some champions are definitely overperforming more than other ones, some surprisingly so when you check out the actual stats. Like, Terminus actually has like a 60% win rate in competitive. How? I don't, I don't know. Okay, anyway. And it's not that it's perfect, but I just enjoy playing it a lot still. I do also think that the taste of the events and theme sets of skins were nice alongside the current way cards and items work, which is fair. I've been more hopeful over the last few months of Paladins with them cranking up quality of skins, UI and things like that, plus some sweet Paladin theme sets for esports coverage along the fun of events as well. Like the Las Vegas event was crazy good to watch, GG to a Team Envy who put on an amazing performance. But that does add a bit to the surprise at such a lukewarm release, which is just a symbolic gesture rather than something tangible for people to grab into. And I guess what I just sort of expected was some sort of media circus around the release and there to be this release patch and they'll be talking about it. There was press talking about the release a week ago, but it's kind of maybe misleading to this release date now, rather than just saying Gold Paladins has released over this patch. I don't know whether it's just been miscommunicated a little bit too. Plus you have to think about what the media will think when they pick up the game. If an inevitably they start reviewing Paladins with an actual score, will these bugs, some of the bigger ones at the moment, and some of the polish impact on what is, again, what I said, a great game, and maybe put people off once again? Because I think that Paladins has a bit of a chip on its shoulder, trying to prove that it's not just a copy of X, Y, or Z. Ultimately, perhaps it was for the best, who knows, as the date would have clashed with the Fortnite Marvel crossover, uh, which will have the gaming world's gaze for a day. I mean, that's a pretty crazy matchup as things go, with two giants there. And looking to Paladins' future, Alyssa has talked about the new patch cycle for Paladins with a bug fixing and tweaking patch every two weeks with some skins and things like that. 
and bigger content patches every six weeks with champions and events or both together which does sound reasonable and a more realistic aim for the team and perhaps they can iron out some of the bigger bugs that have creeped in over the past few months and polish will come then that's i guess being hopeful again at the end of the day i think most of the people enjoying the game and those of part of the community would like more players faster matches more incentive for high risk to keep quality up and ultimately a better game and I'm not really sure whether this launch will really draw that sort of attention. So yeah, I haven't been massively impressed with this one. Anyway, be sure to let me know all of your thoughts on launch in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe for more of my content, and hit that notification bell icon to catch them whenever they are uploaded. Thanks for watching everybody. Until next time, Joshino.